This video will introduce the process of stem cell mobilization and collection. After viewing this video, you'll have an appointment with your case manager and doctor to answer any questions and review your mobilization and collection schedule. Stem cells are immature cells that mature and divide to make important cells for your body to function. They make up the red blood cells that carry oxygen, white blood cells that help fight infections, and platelets that prevent your body from bleeding. Once you're identified as a match to the recipient, you will have a series of tests to make sure you're in good physical condition to undergo the procedure. You'll have blood taken, a questionnaire to complete, and possibly other tests depending on your past medical history. You'll meet with a healthcare provider who will perform a history and a physical. One of our transplant doctors will review all of the results and determine you to be a suitable stem cell donor. Once we have your written consent, we can move forward with the mobilization and collection of your stem cells. Stem cells originate and live in the marrow space of the bones. These cells need to be mobilized to move them out of the bone marrow space and into the bloodstream where they can be collected in a relatively easy procedure. The most common way to mobilize your stem cells is to give a medicine called filgrastim or growth factor. This is given as a daily injection under your skin. Growth factor stimulates your bone marrow to make more stem cells and moves them to the peripheral bloodstream for collection. The growth factor can cause side effects that are frequently described as flu-like. This can include bone pain or low-grade fever or headache. Your case manager will discuss strategies to treat these side effects. The apheresis department is located on the second floor of the Fred and Pamela Buffett Cancer Center. The apheresis nurses are specially trained to run the apheresis machines and manage any complications during the collections. You'll be seated in a recliner or a bed next to an apheresis machine. You'll need two intravenous IV needles, one in each arm, that will be started in the bend of your arm. If your veins will not withstand the collection process, a temporary central catheter will be discussed with you by your transplant doctor or case manager. Your blood will be pulled from your IV and into the machine where it spins the blood around like a centrifuge. The spinning force causes different blood cells to separate into layers. The stem cells will be collected into a bag while the rest of your blood is returned to you. The average time of each collection is three to four hours. Once your collection is complete, the product will be taken to the lab where it will be processed and the number of stem cells calculated. Your case manager will notify you at the end of the day with your results and discuss if another collection is necessary or if your donation is complete. Expect to need some recovery time after a stem cell donation. You may have some bruising at the site of the IVs. Ice packs for the first 24 hours will help with the swelling and tenderness in that area. The growth factor injections will stop with your last collection. Effects from the growth factor, such as bone achiness and fever, may persist for another 24 to 48 hours after the last injection. You may feel tired for several days after the stem cell collection. Most donors return to work or school within several days after their donation and feel completely recovered within one to two weeks please notify your transplant doctor or case manager if any symptoms continue or if you have new or unusual symptoms. Thank you for your time and the gift of your donation. Collection was, felt like a very long process, um, but in terms of pain or discomfort, there really wasn't any. It was just weird seeing all this stuff coming out of your body and spinning into a machine and going back into your body. That was like trippy. But it, the process itself wasn't bad. I only had actually two days of collection until they got enough, which I was thankful for because I didn't want to have to go through that a third day. I remember feeling pretty tired by the end of the day because I had come over from Lincoln and had the Hickman port put in, had the stem cell collection, then went through classes on how to clean the Hickman port, and I was pretty wiped out that day. The growth factor shots um, that you receive are painful, uh, as advertised. Uh, you're warned, uh, you know, you're told what you can do to minimize the pain. And if you do all those things, if you listen, to your case manager, to your doctor, to your nurses. Uh, it does minimize the pain, but they're painful. There's, but you know, that's part of it.